everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now, as I've mentioned a few times recently, I'm about to turn 30. I'm turning 30 on the 23rd of March and I am super excited for this new stage in my life. I'm very excited for my 30s. I have a really good feeling about them. And it was really interesting recently because I reflected on a TBR I'd set myself when I was 29 of books I wanted to read before I was 30. And I read some of those books in a reading vlog which you might have seen. And it made me think a little bit more about what my reading priorities were. And I ended up coming up with a list of series or authors backlogs that I really want to have finished. But this is very much a long-term TBR. This is not books I want to read in the next year because given that they are series or books by authors in as a whole, they're quite a number. And realistically, I don't plan on reading them in the next year. It would probably take me more than two years. So what I wanted to do was kind of set myself a very casual, decade-long TBR. <laughs> Who knows if I'll still be making booktube videos in 10 years, it's a very strange thought, but I have already been making booktube videos for 10 years, so never say never. But I thought I would set myself this TBR for series I want to complete or read in my 30s. Obviously I'll talk a little bit more about why these particular series or books by authors have made it onto this list, but before we get into the books themselves I do want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video who are Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa are hands down my favourite jewellery brand and have been for over a year now. All of my favourite pieces are from their brand and you'll see them in a lot of my videos including the ones I am wearing today. So they did very kindly send me some new pieces for me to wear in today's video including these gorgeous earrings which are a women's torso and these match a necklace I already own from Ana Luisa that you may have seen in a previous video so I now have the matching set I'm absolutely in love as well as two necklaces which I've decided to layer. I'm not often a necklace layer, but I also don't have a ton of shorter necklaces like these that stack as well as these do, so I'm really pleased that I can now mix and match these with some of my other pieces and can capture a variety of different vibes. Plus I have my first ever Ana Luisa ring on. This is actually an adjustable ring, so I am not a big ring wearer. It's something I'm trying to wear more of. In fact, in my 30s, I really want to become a ring wearer. I just don't have many and haven't found many I like so I love the simplicity of this sort of rope style ring that like I mentioned was adjustable so I can wear it on a bunch of different fingers. Ana Luisa is a brand that makes a lot of long lasting good quality pieces of jewellery made out of most commonly recycled metal which is absolutely incredible and given that I am about to be a woman in my 30s it's really nice to have begun replacing a lot of my cheaper costume jewellery and now truly be wearing the pieces that I'm probably going to be wearing <laughs> for the next decade or two or three. So basically what I'm trying to say is I absolutely love Ana Luisa and if you're looking for some new pieces for yourself or for gifting opportunities, Mother's Day is coming up, then do check them out. They will be linked in the description box down below as well as a 10% off code that they have very kindly provided to me for my subscribers. So thank you once again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. But now let's get in to the books. So these series or um, collections of books are in no particular order. I'm just going to run through them as I wrote them down. And the first one will probably come as no surprise to you because it is Terry Pratchett's Discworld series. So Terry Pratchett is hands down one of my favourite authors of all time and quite aptly I actually read my first book by him when I was 10 years old. My dad lent me a copy of one of Terry Pratchett's books because he was a big fan and that's what started me on my journey. So I've been reading Terry Pratchett now for 20 years, yet I haven't completed all of his books. And there is partly a reason for that, despite the fact that there are 40 novels in the Discworld series, I have been kind of tentative about finishing that series because I love it so much, the idea of there being no new Discworld novels now that Terry Pratchett has passed away is a little bit sad and it's also this book series that connects me to my dad. I always shared with my dad when he was still alive for those 15 years we had between 10 and 25 when we could talk about them. And I basically have a lot of emotions tied up in the series. But I have continuously reread a bunch of books from the Discworld as well as made my way through around 30 of them. However, that does still leave me with 10 or a quarter of the Discworld books 
to read, which is something that I can't believe I haven't done yet, but also I'm very excited to know that I still have to enjoy. And I would really love to read those 10 last novels over the next few years in my 30s. I think there would be something quite special about that. I want to stop putting them off. I also would like to have a child at some point in my 30s and it's something I'd like to share with them when they're a little bit older. So yeah, I really want to focus on reading the 10 Discworld novels I haven't read yet as opposed to continuously rereading as opposed to continuously rereading the ones I love, although I won't stop doing that. And yeah, stop putting off all of that joy and humour that I know those books contain because they are comical fantasy novels set on the Discworld, which is a world that Terry Pratchett created that is in the shape of a disc that rides on the back of four elephants that ride on the back of a giant turtle through space. It's whimsical, fantastical, wonderful and incredibly clever and witty. So I'm always encouraging everyone to check out their first Terry Pratchett book. I do have an entire video about the series and where you might like to start that I'll link down below but for me I have 10 books now that I need to read in the next 10 years. It's nice to set a TBR where you basically have a decade to read it because it feels very pressure free. The next series of books on my list aren't actually a series, they are just a selection of one author's works and that is the remaining works of the playwright Euripides which I haven't read yet. So Euripides was a classical Greek playwright that wrote tragic plays for the stage in Athens and he would have written possibly hundreds, but we only have 18 or 19 which survive in their complete form. And I say 18 or 19 because one of those plays, Rhesus, is disputed. It's unlikely to be Euripides. Most scholars don't believe that it is, but at this point it's sort of just been um, associated with his name. And Rhesus is actually one of the ones I've read, but I have yet to read seven of those 19 if we include Rhesus. So I'm past halfway, which is pretty good, um, but I would really like to have completed all of Euripides' work. That will also mean that I'm pretty close to having read all of the tragic plays that we have that survive from ancient Greece because I've read the majority of Sophocles and Aeschines who we have fewer surviving of. Euripides has the most and all of these plays retell Greek myths that you may or may not be familiar with. They are Euripides versions of these myths and they're really really interesting. There are plays in particular which have featured heavily in my own research but some which I haven't just had the necessity or opportunity to get to yet and I want to change that. On a similar topic, I would really like to read the rest of Aristophanes' work. So Aristophanes is another ancient Greek writer, but this time of comedy. So he wrote comic plays for the stage in Athens, and 11 of those survive in full. At this moment in time, however, I have only read six. I say only, that's still more than half, but I would love to read the other five. They are very interesting from the perspective of understanding ancient humour as well as ancient politics and social commentary and conversations that were going on that um, Aristophanes used his plays to comment on. They have a real mixture of humour from like more highbrow political humour to literal fart jokes and so far my experience with his work has been very hit or miss. Some of it I find funny, some of it I don't, but it's still really, really interesting, so I would like to complete his back catalogue as well. Back to a traditional series which I would like to finish, and that is actually a comic book series, which is Giant Days by John Allison. So Giant Days is possibly my favourite comic book series of all time, and I am somewhat surprised by that because I would expect myself to dub a fantasy or horror or speculative series my favourite, because those are typically the genres I pick up. This, however, is pure and simple contemporary life. And I have enjoyed reading this comic book series more than I think I've enjoyed any other comic book series at this point. It's a comic book series I'd actually like to go back and reread but first finish. And I believe I still have three or two of the 14 volumes that there are left to read. I need to double check that actually. Sometimes they blend together a little bit when you're reading comic books. Um, but it is a series about a group of friends at university. And university was like one of the most special times of my life and I mean my undergrad it. I don't really believe in one period in your life being like the highlight whereas it all goes downhill from there. I feel like every part of life has its opportunities but it was a very special time in my life. I made some of my lifelong friends there, I really developed as a human being, 
I found a lot of my passions and interests. So reading this series, which is about a group of friends at university in Britain, which resembles my experience of university a lot more than necessarily American college narratives do, is very nostalgic and humorous and, you know, just touching and heartwarming for me. So I'd really like to complete that series. We then have a series I actually haven't started yet, but would really like to get to in my 30s, and that is Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency by Douglas Adams. So Douglas Adams wrote one of my all-time favourite series in the world, which is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is another series that I have been enjoying since I was around 12 or 13 that I have consumed in all formats, both the radio show, the book, the film. I've seen the radio show performed live on stage by the original cast. I've seen the original 1980s television show. Any way I can consume the series I have done, I absolutely love it. Yet still somehow I have never gotten around to reading Douglas Adams' other big series and most famous piece of work, which is the Dirk Gently series and this is another one which is a little bit like speculative, science fiction fantastical, I'm not quite sure how all of that manifests but as opposed to being set in space it's set on earth and we follow Dirk Gently who is of course a holistic detective and I don't know what to expect from the series except I am sure for Douglas Adams absolutely on point humour, but I can't wait to discover what it's all about. We then have a series which is definitely an outlier on this list. It's a bit of a random one, but it's a series I started last year very much on the back of TikTok or BookTok, which is the Ice Planet Barbarian series by Ruby Dixon. So this is a science fiction smutty romance series. It's very high on the smut level. And I picked them up because everyone in BookTok was talking about them and I needed something purely escapist that would be easy to read, that would be like relaxing and wouldn't take a lot of brain power. So I thought, hey, I have Kindle Unlimited, let's give it a shot. And I was so surprised by A, how well written these books are and B, how compelling the storylines are. Yes, there's a large focus on the romance and the smut elements, but they're also really interesting in terms of science fiction world building, exploration of emotions and character development. And I ended up on a rabbit hole. I think I have now read seven of the series and there are definitely enough books that go into the double digits at this point, but I'd like to keep going. I'd like to see what happens to all of the characters I've met throughout the first seven books in their own journeys because each book focuses on a new romance between a new couple. So basically I want to carry on with the series, I want to read the rest of the stories in my 30s and I want to have said that I can tick that one off my list. We then have a series which I've actually only read one book in but it's one of my favourite books of all time so I really need to get on the rest of the books and that is the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. So the first book in the series is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which is a science fiction novel which is very very character driven and I love that. Like character driven novels are what I look for, characters are the most important part of stories for me as a reader and it's also a book which is very hopeful and joyful and I just loved everything about it. So I've kind of been nervous to read the next few in the series because each book follows different protagonists. We leave those protagonists that I grew to love in book one and follow new protagonists but in the same science fiction far-flung future world. So I decided to leave a little bit of time between books one and two, but now it's just getting ridiculous. I'm basically just not reading the sequel to one of my favourite books of all time for no reason at this stage. And I'd love to be able to say that the series is one of my favourites of all time. So it is definitely a high priority for my 30s. Another series which actually I've only read one book in and I'm kind of appalled by and really want to finish is The Diviners by Libba Bray. So this is a YA paranormal fantasy series set in 1920s USA and I read Libba Bray's other series which is A Great and Terrible Beauty years and years ago. I actually read it when my dad was very ill and it was a real escapist comfort series for me. It quickly became an absolute favourite and 
since then I did start the Diviner series, like I said, I read book one, I loved book one, it's sort of a paranormal mystery with a paranormal serial killer, like I said, in 1920s America. And then I did start book two, but for whatever reason just didn't get into it. And there are four books in this series, so I need to go back, I need to persevere, I need to push through whatever was blocking me in book two, and I need to carry on and find out what happens to our characters, because I am convinced I will love this series if I just, you know, dig back in. Then another series which I haven't started is the Parable of the Sowers series by Octavia E. Butler. So Octavia E. Butler is another author who's written one of my favourite books of all time, which is Kindred, a time travel novel that is so incredibly well written with such interesting characters and so like emotionally heart-wrenching. I absolutely adored it, I recommend it to everyone but I've never read anything else by this author and I'm particularly interested in Parable of the Sour which is her dystopian series that's probably most famous after Kindred or maybe tied with Kindred in the sort of literary world. I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about it, I have complete faith in Octavia Butler's writing because of Kindred, so I really just want to make sure that I carry on with her work and make this series my next read. The last series on this list, however, is a bit more of a nostalgic one. It's one that I've actually read in part before and I'm currently on a reread of, and it's the Card Captors manga series. So Card Captors was an anime adapted from a manga that I used to watch on television as a kid, and it was one of my absolute favorite shows. I was head over heels with this show. Then when I was a little bit older I watched the original Japanese version with subtitles and discovered all the things that they'd removed from the English dubbed version, particularly a lot of the queer stuff. And that was really what started me reading manga in general. I ended up picking up the Card Captors comic, I ended up picking up the Card Captors series to read and then discovering other series. But I don't think I ever finished Card Captors from what I remember. When I was growing up at some point I just forgot to keep reading it. So I started rereading it during lockdown originally and I want to carry on with that reread and complete the series. There is a follow-on series called Card Captors Clear Card which I would like to read but it's not as high priority as just completing the original Card Captors series. So those are the series and back catalogues of authors that I want to get to in my 30s. It's a very casual low expectations TBR, like I said, I have an entire decade to read these books, but when I'm thinking about what I want to be reading and series I want to have completed, those are the ones that come to mind. So hopefully you enjoy this simultaneously retrospective and sort of forward looking TBR video. I, like I said, I'm super excited to turn 30, so if you're already in your 30s or beyond, do let me know what your favourite parts of being in your 30s are or where. I'd love to hear some 30s hype. But that's pretty much all for now. Thank you once again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. You will find my unique link and discount code in the description box down below if you'd like 10% off. And I hope you all have a lovely week. Until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone!